1975. Dear Jim, well, we finally visited your grave. I suppose I didn't come to your funeral because I was so mad and disappointed in you the last few years the band was together. It wasn't hard to find your plot with all the graffiti leading up to it. I don't know why I'm writing this to you, but there's some things I gotta get off my chest. It's too late for you, but it's not too late for me. Everyone go home tonight and write a song. Jim said at a December 65 rehearsal, but use universal imagery instead of specifics. Earth, air, fire, water. Nothing great came at the next day's rehearsal. But just after the new year, something happened out at Robbie's parents' house in the Palisades. Robbie greeted us at the door with unusual enthusiasm. I got a new song, my, my first song. I think it's a hit. <laughs> Jim said, I've got one too. Ray and I were silent. <laughs> After picking up his guitar, Robbie squeezed out a few catchy chords and sang the opening lines, which immediately sounded like a hit single to me. Then Jim sang his new one, a cappella. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end of our elaborate plans. The end of everything that stands. The end, no safety or surprise. The end, I'll never look into your eyes again. Jeez. A chill ran up my spine. These weren't lyrics, they were an epitaph. He may be a poet, I thought, but he sure is hung up on death. The energy picked back up in the room. I started playing a Latin beat on my drums. Hey, how about a jazzy feel to it? I suggested. Ray and Robbie nodded. Uh, Ray leaned over his organ for a moment, working on an intro. Shit. Damn. For the next ten minutes, Ray labored over the intro while the rest of us took a break. Come on, baby, light my fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. Try to set the night on. last night at 4 a.m., Robbie said, sipping fresh orange juice. I was half asleep, mind you, and you know what he said? He said, this is God calling, and we've decided to kick you right out of the universe. <laughs> what a card. Yeah. I hope he's in good shape for tonight. <laughs> Me too. Ladies and gentlemen, from Los Angeles, California, the doors! Dead rats sucking on a soldier's sperm. Crap, that's crap! <laughs> then I came to an abrupt halt. Pat. Jesus Christ, Jim just fell off the stage! <laughs> the audience has broken his fall and they're trying to push him back up. But the stage is so high they can't quite get him back up. What do we do? We continue vamping. <laughs> And Jim scrambles over the edge and grabs the mic. Oh, the audience lets out a cheer. I'm laughing so hard the tempo is dragging. <sighs> we argued in front of everybody about which song to play next. <laughs> stopped playing <laughs> and started pounding on his keys in quick expressive grunts <clears throat> well I immediately did the same thing and we stopped the car 
free form poetry and music. Yeah, no conservative chord changes or rhythm. Just primeval grunts. Woo! Oh, 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 yeah. Oh. Only since Jim was done, we slammed back in the rhythm. Oh. God, that was fun. <laughs> On to the double time. The final. Reflecting on this today, I realized, Jim, that you knew that Western Man's quest for a better job, a house, and car was a substitute for his real quest, something sacred. What you missed was that the need for the sacred must be transformed to an inner cathedral, the momentary sense of exultant power wine drinking can give is only a sign to show men that they had within them more than they knew. They themselves could become divine. Maybe you are a god. Down here, you're a media god. I wish we'd learned a little more about each other. You certainly have made a mark. You influenced me a lot. I've even been reading a little Nietzsche. A quote of his comes to mind. A man's ancestors have paid the price of what he is. You definitely are in me. So, I want to say thank you.